Hello everyone. So in uh, Easter reflection today, we're going to be uh, looking at uh, the account of Jesus going into Jerusalem and cursing the fig tree on the way in uh, and then going into the temple um, and overturning the tables and, and chasing out the money changers and the, and the people making money there. Uh, and then the following day, seeing the, the fig trees withered and his disciples asking him about that. You can read about this in Mark's account in chapter 11 verses 12 to 25. I'm not going to read uh, the verses to right now, but you can read them at, at your leisure. But at this point in, in Jesus' story, what's happening is obviously we're moving ever closer to the crucifixion and we're getting close to the time when Jesus is going to uh, be uh, leaving his disciples. He's going to be returning to heaven and and it's almost like he's thinking that I'm going to be leaving them soon they're going to become the church and I need to get across to them some really key last important messages and so what we've got in this passage is just a few things that Jesus is teaching them and two things in particular and uh, it's very interesting that um, it's almost like he's preparing them for, for, for when he's going and uh, you know when someone teaches us if they just use words kind of you learn a bit don't you but it's not the same as if they actually demonstrate something in front of you uh, and make the penny drop it's a little bit like you know if somebody doesn't swim you can give them a book on how to swim and it can tell them they've got to do this and they've got to kick the legs and that kind of thing but it's nothing like getting in the water and trying it yourself and then you really figure it out and so Jesus is teaching the disciples on the job uh, and actually what he teaches them in this passage today, actually, I think he's dead relevant to them and dead relevant to us as well, to you and me today. You know, he doesn't lose an opportunity to get something across and he communicates it uh, with emotion, as we'll see, and with passion uh, and, you know, demonstrates to the disciples much more than just giving them words. Uh, and so the first thing that I just want to briefly cover is actually in the temple. So we read in, in Mark's account and in some of the other Gospels as well how Jesus drives out people that are selling stuff in, in the temple and he overturns the tables uh, and he says, you know, my house will be a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of robbers. You know, and this is the temple. This is the place in the Old Testament where people would come to meet God. But meeting God had been replaced with making money. Um, people were, you know, using it and using the day when it could have been uh, used for prayer to make money. Uh, and that kind of makes me wonder, you know, what would Jesus say to our generation, you know, um, about this type of thing? You know, it's not that there's anything wrong with making money of itself, but, but it's wrong in the temple. It's wrong when it's squeezing God out, you know, uh, and... That's really what's happening here. The God's getting squeezed out and being replaced by making money. So Jesus quotes this interesting verse from Isaiah about my house will be called a house of prayer. And if you look up uh, the chapter in Isaiah where that comes from, it's very interesting um, because the Isaiah passage is really all about the temple being a place of joy because it's a place where people who aren't Jews, who aren't God's people, will find God there and will pray. Really interesting, you know, I didn't know that before, but I just found it really interesting. The temple is a place, Isaiah is saying, where people who don't know God, who are outside, who aren't these normal people, will find God. And there'll be great joy because of that, and they'll pray. And so Jesus is very, very clear about what the temple is about. Uh, and if you remember the other Sunday, Chris was telling us about the tabernacle, which is the forerunner of the temple in the Old Testament, and how in the New Testament, how now the temple is no longer a place where we go to meet God. It's no longer a building or bricks and mortar where we go to meet God. But that our body, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Our body is the place where God has met us. And so it kind of begs the question, doesn't it, from this passage? What would Jesus find? in your temple today, in my temple? Have we squeezed God out and filled our lives with other things? Is our temple, is my temple a house of prayer? Is our temple a place that non-believers would see and find God and find God's joy? And the second thing in today's passage is just this really strange episode with the fig tree, isn't it? Um, which when you first read it, you think, 
what is this? Why is this included in here? It's very strange. So on day one, Jesus walks past this fig tree with his disciples. It's not the season for figs, but he still goes over to it. When he sees there's no fruit, he curses it. And Mark records for us that the disciples heard him cursing the fig tree. And so then we have the episode in the temple. That day ends, they go home. And then the next day on day two is Jesus and the disciples are walking past. The disciples look at that fig tree and discover it's withered. See that it's completely withered. So Jesus, you know, that fig tree you curse is now withered. So Jesus uses that as a teaching opportunity for them. You know, he's demonstrating by action and, by, uh, and catching the disciples' attention. You know, it's like that they heard Jesus curse the fig tree on day one. And then they walk past the next day and think, wow, we heard Jesus curse that fig tree yesterday. Now look at it. And, you know, it's kind of, he's got their attention. You know, they're going to listen to what he's going to say because they've grabbed it. And so Jesus teaches them about what can be done with faith. You know, and he uses the example of the fig tree to drive home, you know, you, if you pray with faith, this is what you can do. Faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move a mountain, he says. He teaches them that. And the, imagine the effect on the disciples of seeing that, of not just sat down in like a lecture room or on the hillside and Jesus teaching them that with words, but actually seeing Jesus do that, demonstrate that, and then tell them that they are able to do the same with faith. You know, it's an amazing thing. Imagine the effect. It reminds me... Well, actually, it reminds me of quite a few times in my own life when I learned so much from Jesus, when I see what he's done first, rather than just hearing the words. You know, a couple of examples, I can remember hearing lots of teaching about being baptised in the Holy Spirit, about why it was important, about how it would happen, and about those kind of things. But until I saw somebody else get filled with the Holy Spirit, until I experienced it myself, you know, I didn't really get it. But then you do. When you, when you experience it yourself. Or, or healing would be another example. You know, I heard lots of messages years ago about healing and praying for healing and how God would heal people. And I think, yeah, yeah, okay, it's in the Bible. I kind of get it. But the moment I saw somebody physically healed in front of my own eyes, completely changed my view, completely changed my, 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 my handle on it, completely changed my faith about seeing it happen as well. So demonstrating it. And Jesus demonstrating those things in our lives. And I just wonder, you know, every day, maybe, is Jesus teaching us something? As you go through your day today, as I go through my day, you know, what is Jesus going to teach us about and demonstrate in front of us? And use something that happens to teach us something about him and walking with him and his plan and his purpose. Because there's two little things just at the end here that Jesus says to the disciples that are key if we want to see and pray with faith. The first one is, he says, we've got to believe. We've got to believe. Uh, and I think behind that, what Jesus is really saying, it's not just that we've got to, you know, try hard and, you know, grimace and think, yeah, Lord, I really want you to do this, Lord. But it's about believing in the one to whom we were praying and, to, uh, and who will answer our prayers. Believing in Jesus as the one who is well able to answer what we are praying for. And that we're not believing and, and praying to something that's a bit of a wishful thing or, or whatever, but it's the Son of God. Who can answer our prayers? So it's believing in the one to whom we're praying. And the second thing he says is when we pray, we've got to forgive people. You know, it's almost like Jesus is saying to his disciples, if you've got unforgiveness in your heart, then you've got less room for faith. And we need to deal with that unforgiveness to create space for faith to grow. Let's just pray. Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, that you walk with us daily. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that daily you teach us Thank you, Lord Jesus, that daily, you know, your desire is that we would learn more about you, that we would grow to be more like you. And that, Lord, your desire is to teach us and equip us for the things that you've called us to do. I pray today, Lord, as we go through this day, that we would hear and see what you are teaching us today. Amen.